As um, Daniel mentioned, I am a filmmaker out of Nashville, Tennessee. Now, when people think of Nashville, Tennessee, they don't usually think about film and video production. But what they do think of is usually country music and Jack Daniel's whiskey. Now, I think that's a fair assumption because I live about an hour and a half away from the Jack Daniel's distillery, so it's a little bit convenient. But we actually do have a small but growing community of professionals that are passionate about film and video. And I've had a chance to work with many of these people. And they're, they're very talented, very gifted. And you feel like you're about one degree separation from knowing everybody in the industry, in that city. Um, but as I meet more and more people, I realize that there's not one person that does just one job. They do a variety of work. And I'm certainly no different. Um, I've worked with budgets ranging from zero dollars all the way up to nearly a million dollars. And each one of those projects require a different approach. And that approach is important because I believe that if not 100% of the time, at least 99% of the time, how you effectively plan, carry out, and you follow through your pre-production process results in the success of your project. And part of that effectiveness is knowing what tools are available to you and what pitfalls you can fall into during the pre-production process. Now, I'm sure, uh, I know my, for myself and I for, know for many of you, I'm sure that in recent years, the industry is changing. It's always evolving and those changes have brought in many different challenges and I'm sure you guys have experienced some of this. Budgets are continually to shrink and you have to produce more with less money. Uh, you have less time to produce your project. Um, there's a higher demand for product, higher demand for content. Therefore, you have less time to um, produce that content, and hopefully you're getting a lot of that work. When you combine those two things together, less money, less time, that creates a void. And usually that means you have less collaboration. And when you combine all three of those things, you have less money, less time, less collaboration, that means you as a content producer or a filmmaker, you're having to wear multiple hats. You are doing more roles in your production. And so I started to notice this. Uh, it, was, it was a hindrance in my workflow as well. And one of the things I started doing was looking at multiple apps. All these mobile apps that were coming around uh, for filmmaking were great. I started to use them. I started to talk about them. And the reality is these apps in and of themselves, they're not bad. They do exactly what they say that they're going to do. But as I started to use multiple apps for my productions, again, because I'm using, I'm doing all types of productions, um, I realized that there's problems with this kind of workflow. One of those problems is that there's a ton of apps for each one of these things. There's a ton of apps for script writing. There's a ton of apps for storyboarding. There's a ton of apps for uh, doing your shot list, a ton of apps for doing your production management. And so you have to learn all these. And I often had buyer's remorse. I, what looked good on screen, I would download it to my iPhone or my iPad. I'd use it. It might work for one production, but it wouldn't work from the next one because they don't, it's not a one size fits all with these apps. The other issue I saw was no collaboration. These apps don't communicate with each other. The uh, screenwriting app didn't collaborate with my, my shot list app, and I need that data to go from one place to another. Uh, my shot list app didn't communicate with my storyboard, so my storyboard artist needed that information that I needed from my shot list. So there was no collaboration, as well as it eliminated collaboration with my team. I couldn't very well hand off my iPhone or my iPad to any one of my team members to take home and do their work. I, need, I needed my device. So they were having to do all their work, give it to me, and then I was taking that data and that information and putting it into the apps so they could work. Well, that doesn't work. Um, I found out that I was spending so much time on using these apps that the apps weren't working for me. I was working for the apps. And the last thing is that I was spending so much time that I was, doing, I was not doing one of the most important things about pre-production, and that is the creative process. You know, knowing what kind of uh, 
you know, working with my team and being able to think about the shots, think about the project, and really diving into the, the process creatively, and I wasn't able to do that. So about a year ago, I received a call from, from David Anderson uh, from Production Minds. He says, hey, I've got this pre-production software and would love for you to beta test it. And I was like, well, I had my list of things that I was really looking for. I wanted a multiple tool set of features. I wanted to be able to collaborate with my team more effectively, and I wanted a, a tool that would in, inspire creativity. And I, I basically said, well, unless it doesn't do these things, I don't think it's going to work. However, I said, well, let me give it a try. So I opened the link uh, that he sent me to the, uh, the beta test software, and my jaw dropped. I mean, I was amazed by just the list of tools that were there, the features, and I said, if half these things work, then this makes my process 100 times better. And that software was the Production Minds. So I told him, well, I'm about to produce uh, a short film. Uh, it's a low-budget short film, but I, I would love to be able to use the software uh, for this process. He was excited about it. I said, uh, if this is good, then let's move forward. He said, absolutely. So uh, in the winter, this past winter, I started working on uh, Fruitcake, which is a... Um, uh, which I am the co-producer and the director of photography and the production manager for. And um, we divided the production up into two phases. The first phase we shot um, in April, this past spring. And we took the summer to raise some money and then we're gonna finish it in October. And so we were able to use Production Minds for the whole phase one. And it was an amazing process. It allowed me to c collaborate with my first AD, my production designer, and the director, and it was a great experience. And so I'd like to walk you through some of those uh, points that we use the most, also explain, uh, the, just give you a summary of the tools that are available in Production Minds. First, I'd like to show you the trailer, just so you can have a visual of what we're able to do with the Production Minds software um, and uh, what it uh, assisted us to be able to create. So. Adam, what's wrong? Can I stay home from school tomorrow? Why don't you want to go to school? The kids? What about the kids, Adam? They don't like me. And I don't know what to say to them. That's only going to get harder for you as you get older. But you decide what a day looks like. Adam, you decide that. Every scene you just saw, there was not one scene in there that Production Minds didn't touch. We used pretty much everything that allowed us to, almost all of those shots were visualized, was storyboarded, uh, were able to collaborate and talk about as a team and really finesse those shots, all the scenes. And that's the basis of or the essence of what I love about this, pro this product. And so um, here I've got Production Minds pulled up. This is uh, the tool list. 
And I'm just going to go over these really quick. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory, but crew list here is where you obviously you put all your crew in. You can have multiple roles per crew. Uh, you're not just restricted to one role. You have the next area here is treatment. I'm excited about this, this area right here because this is new. It was not available to us during the beta testing. But I believe this feature here opens up production minds to a whole new uh, genre of pr types of productions because you can actually start creating with your team without a script. Uh, you can, if you have a commercial or a music video, you can go ahead and start using this area here to start putting your visuals together and collaborating with your team even before a script is written, even before your shot list is created, even before your storyboards are put in. This is a great area to start uh, collaborating with your team. Breakdown, this is where your script goes into. And normally you'd think, well, why doesn't it say script? Well, because this is actually where the beauty of Production Minds comes in. It breaks down the script so that the rest of the tool set allows you to have the freedom to not have to enter data in more than once. Your script is the framework in which you can build your production. And I'll show you a little bit more on what that means uh, a little bit uh, here in a few minutes. Uh, shot list and storyboard. Obviously, this is where you'd put in your shots, and your storyboard editor can start uh, putting in all the illustrations. Um, you can also use previs uh, shots, if you like, in this area. Um, the previs and animatic area is after your, your, uh, your script is created, after your shot list and storyboards are there, and you want to start doing some some uh, previs or animations, depending on what type of project you're using. Uh, this is an area where you start putting in those, kind of start to get the feel of how the production is coming together and what the shots are supposed to look like and things of that sort. Um, production design. This is where your production designer is going to have his or her playground. This is where you can start putting in things like props, wardrobe, um, logos, or textures, and things of that sort. Um, you know, anything that your production designer is going to touch, this is the area in which they're going to be using. Uh, locations and stages, again, self-explanatory. Uh, your location scout can come in here and start putting in uh, the images for your director um, and your uh, uh, director of photography to start approving. Um, also, if you have a set designer, um, they do some 3D modeling or just even some images, this is a great area for, for that to be put in. Casting, again, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is where your cast comes in. But again, um, it's not just limited to your, your primary cast, your extras, and anything. Anything that you have in your script, this is where you can start putting in all the data. And it doesn't, doesn't mean it's your final cast. It could be people you're looking at. Um, you, uh, you know, once you start doing your casting calls, you can put all the information here and then start the approval process. Uh, the equipment list, this is actually really new. This is, uh, again, wasn't available to us but uh, during the beta testing, but it's a great feature because even throughout your production, not every uh, scene requires the same equipment. You can have different equipment needs in different scenes. So this is where you can start designating that equipment for those uh, different areas. Calendar. This is where you're going to start building your production calendar, your, start setting your dates. Um, a beauty about this, this feature is that it's not just a one for all. You can actually separate your cast and your production crew and your admin. And so you're not bothering everybody f with the, all of the things that need to happen, all the meetings. And you don't have to bother your production crew with, say, some rehearsals that the director wants to have with your cast. They don't need to be there for that. So you can separate out the different areas of the production in your calendar. Rough cuts. So after your production is shot, or you started working on some of the scenes, and you wanted to start bringing your editor into the process, you can. this is an area you can start putting in some of those rough cuts so your editor can get a good idea of what's, what's being produced. Also, for your producers. Uh, for approval on the producers, uh, you can start looking at some of the some of the production shots and some of the edits. 
and as well for your team to collaborate. Um, like for us, we've we split up our production into two phases. We've only done phase one. We're shooting phase two next month. This is a great tool because we can go back and look and say, well, let's make sure that we've completed everything out of phase one. I can we can start looking at the rough cuts and saying, does this scene work? Does this scene work? Did we miss anything? Does it flow properly? So the rough cuts area is a great new addition as well. So I'd like to just dive right in and show you some of the inner workings of these different areas. I'm going to open up Crew List. Now, we used Crew List pretty extensively. Now, you see my name in here a few times. That's, you know, it's a, it's a low budget, short. I still wear multiple roles, but the benefit is that the software allows me to really pay attention to the creative process. I have multiple roles, but I'm actually doing that work. I'm not worried about entering all the data into uh, you know, into different apps. Production Minds allows me to be creative through the whole process. So, but what's great about the crew list is that you can have as much data or as little data as you want. So here, this gives a good amount of information, but when I click on add, you can add a ton of more f uh, information. So let's say I've got a crew that we're traveling internationally great addition is being able to have the passport information so that we that way my uh, some of my staff and my admin can make sh pull all the data out and make sure that everybody's up to date on their passports um, if we have food allergies and some of our crew uh, United States is full of food allergies these days everybody's either got peanut allergy allergies or gluten intolerance or anything like that but you're allowed to have you know if you have uh, certain diets. You can select diets, and then everybody's allowed to have whatever restrictions they might have. So you can export that data, send it to your caterer or your craft services, and let them know what kind of issues you're going to have and make sure they're covered. So again, as much information or as little information as you want, but it's available to you. So next, I want to show you uh, the breakdown. Because again, this is where the breakdown process begins. This is where the Production Minds platform really works for you. Now, the script you can import from different tools. So if your script writer has a preference from you know, writing in Final Draft or Celtics or other software, you can import it from those, type, those formats and bring it in. It automatically populates and automatically conforms uh, inside Production Minds. So I'm going to just select scene one as an example. You can see that my characters are already populated out. I have our main character, Adam, and an out-of-town out of driver. And then I can add these different elements. So we added a cheap watch, work clothes, some props, and a vehicle. Now, why is that important? Well, I'm going to show you in just a little bit. But again, this is where the breakdown happens. This is where you can start entering all your data for this, each scene. And also, you can see here that all of these elements here are all populated. I've got an interior garage scene. I have it during the day. So I have the daytime. I have uh, it's an interior, my location. And again, that's going to play out later on in the process. So if I go back out, and come down to shot list. Now you notice down here, this is all my scenes. Why? Because it was already broken down based on my script. So I have all these areas. Now I don't have to enter the data again. It's already broken down for me. So uh, I can go ahead as a, as a director of photography, I can go ahead and start creating my shot list. So I wanted to show you just for example, scene 11. So I have here my scene broken down into shots. And what I did was early on, I went out and shot the exterior location for the scene for, or for this particular shot. So my storyboard artist was able to come in, look at that, and obviously create the storyboard with my character in the doorway. And here is the actual final shot. Now, it doesn't, this is a pretty simple shot. 
not much going on. But it shows you that you have, you have the ability to upload your images. You have the ability to add your storyboards and even create the final shot uh, inside the shot list. And all this information, again, it's as little or as much as you want. You can add things like camera movements, special requirements. Is it high speed? Uh, is it, um, is it overcranked or if it's normal speed? And technical requirements, all this data can be exported for your first AC, for your camera operator. Um, all this information is accessed uh, by your, your production crew. And here's more. So again, you have your shot number, your subject, your sh shot size. Again, as little or as much information as you want. And all this information, the director's notes, description, synopsis, all that is here based on my screenplay. None of this information was put in twice. The only thing I had to in enter in is just the shots and just the storyboards. And that's it. So the last thing I wanted to show you was the casting area. We use this pretty good. Now, as you can see down here, again, based on my script, I have all my characters all broken out already. I don't have to enter any of this data in. All this is all here. So all I have to do is come in here, select what character I want to start putting in data for, and I can add their images. I can also add video. Video is great for casting. If you have a small production or you don't have a huge casting process, uh, we had to move quickly, so we didn't have a ton of time to dedicate to casting. So we actually had people send in their videos uh, to us and say, here's some of my work. Um, or they would actually take, we'd send them the script, and they would read a line from it, and they would audition, send us the video, and we could upload it into the screen, into the casting area. And that way, our team could look at all the potential members for that cast, or for that particular cast member, and go through the approval process. So you can have video, which plays really easily. Oh, there it goes. So this was, uh, this was a demo that uh, our lead actor, when he first applied for the position, sent us. You can play it right in from YouTube or Vimeo. Plays effortlessly. As well as some still images. And again, same thing like the crew member area. You can add as little or as much information as you want. And it's pretty much the same with a couple of different extra features. And all this information is used across the board. You know, as, as a casting director, you, you don't need to know everything. But for your production designer, you do. You need to know the weight. You need to know the height, what their hair color is things of that sort, because your production designer is going to be responsible for the wardrobe or responsible for the hairstyles. So, and your wardrobe person is going to be responsible for what they're going to look like, how tall they are, what size shirt they're going to need. So all that information is available. So those are the areas that we use the most. And again, we, uh, like I said before, there wasn't one aspect of from the, uh, the, short, uh, the trailer that you saw that we didn't touch. And so um, uh, we had a great experience. We're going to be using it even more for phase two. And we're looking forward to using some of the new features that are available now. And uh, we just had a, a, a pleasure using the software. So I'd um, like to invite Gabor up here. And we can take any uh, questions that you might have.